days to go. Two days to go. Today, Eric is at his grand and grandpa's house. And we're just going to go to Costa for maybe an hour or two, and then we're getting groceries delivered. Then we're probably going to pack some bags. Tomorrow, I'm just going to see a friend in the morning. And I'm not sure what we're going to do in the afternoon. Um, I'm going to try and eat as much food as I can because I have to stop eating. I think after six, seven, something like that. Let's get Chinese. Let's get Chinese tomorrow. Yeah, so that's something I'll get wild rice tomorrow, which is my favourite. If you haven't tried it, it's amazing. It's a takeaway on London Road, but it's my like old school Chinese because you can't order online and you have to make your order on the telephone, which is what I used to do when I was little. Pay cash. But anyway, and pay cash only. Um, so that's it. There's just two days to go. I had a dream last night that someone, obviously it was my consultant, but in the dream it was just someone was hammering a metal rod into my leg. So that's pretty realistic because that's definitely what's going to be happening. Uh, I'm just excited, but I'm also nervous. This is the last time we'll cost you with just us. The next time, maybe we won't have the scooter outside. We've been coming here with the scooter ever since we got it. We leave it outside. Oh, is that showing my face? Oh no, that's it. We leave the scooter outside. This costa is not far from home at all. It's not very good for your finances though, is it? Having a costa so close to your house. There's actually two, but this one is closest. Got another costa though. Two days to go and I've got to start doing the surgical wash now. They give they gave me this in hospital last time, but because I'm not in hospital before the surgery and just doing it at home, you just wash yourself with it. It's pink stuff and it helps um fight infection. So I have to do this twice a day, including my hair. It is nearly half past three and since we got back from Costa I've just been doing my blog, I'm doing as much as I can. Um, because I'm going to be a little bit out of action for a week or two. So I've just been trying to get as much done as I can. Felix has had a nap, he's awake now. And Eric is coming back soon from his grandparents. So I'm really excited to see him, I really miss him. I'm sort of getting a bit upset now about having to um, go into hospital. I just remember this time last time um, when I had the first stage. I went into hospital a few days before the surgery because I needed blood transfusions and medicine. I was really quite ill from the septic arthritis, but this time I don't need to do that. And I'm a bit nervous now because I realized this time last time I was already in hospital. So it's just giving me a few flashbacks of that and um, I've realised that actually being in hospital is pretty grim I don't like the whole like you feel so vulnerable and um, yeah it's just not very comfortable and I really like being at home or with my own surroundings and in my own bed but I shouldn't be in long so it should be fine it's just I don't like the thought of I don't like the thought of it as I'm sure nobody does but also earlier on I got a phone call from the orthopaedic department and they were like oh hi I'm just asking you a few questions um are you still coming and I was like of course can you imagine if I said no my consultant would ring me up and be like what do you mean you're not having your operation like I have to have this hip spacer out so I just thought it was really funny that they asked that and they're just making sure that I know that I've got to fast tomorrow and um, asking me if I'm well and all that sort of stuff so I did my wash this morning and I've got to do another one tonight it's just like an antiseptic wash that you have to do um to prevent to prevent infection I actually really like the smell of it I'm quite a clean person I like to have a bath every day but I can't bath with this stuff it's shower so like I really don't like showers and also it's really difficult for me to stand up and stuff in the shower I've got a bath board where I can sit down in the shower but I much prefer to get in a bath oh Felix has just been sick everywhere. This is him. honestly just what I try and do at home when Eric is not here. I just do as much stuff as I can on the computer as possible. Um, if Felix is in bed having a nap, then I just try and sit with him while he's asleep and do as much as I can. Oh my God, he's sick stinks. Hello, 
Okay, this is our cat key. Hello. Say hello, baby. Don't know why he's acting so scared. Still embarrassed about his poo situation. Yeah, he had poo on his tail and all I had to clean it with a cloth while I got Keith on my knee and fed him trees and tried to stroke him. And all I had to get a cloth with soap on it and clean all the poo off his tail because sometimes he sleeps upstairs on our bed and we can't have that. And didn't he, did you say he, he tried to clean himself? He's yeah, but obviously up. he didn't really want to, did no, he? No, he didn't really want to and it was like all up really... I don't know how he got it up there, but we had to clean him. Okay. I was just thinking about the many times that I sat here when Felix was born and I couldn't make it upstairs to bed because it was too painful to go up and down stairs and it was too painful to lie down in bed when at the very beginning when I had septic arthritis but I didn't know it was that and the only position I could sit in was like this with a pillow on my back and I couldn't move my legs and I just had to sit here all night and hold Felix in my arms and it was horrible I'll never forget that I couldn't even get in bed and lay down and all the pain was just going all down my leg and I was going I went to A&E twice and GP everything like that and no one knew what it was or no one was bothered enough to try and figure out what it was but now when I go to bed I sometimes remember having to sit down here on my own at night and it hurt so much it hurt even just to like lift my foot off the ground and then it continued to hurt a lot until I got my hip out and I remember one of the best things about last time when after the surgery, I remember getting off the bed and I was able to move my toes and my ankle around without pain. And that was like a massive deal. And now after the next surgery, when I finally got the hip replacement, I really hope that one of the best things is I'm going to remember getting out of bed and put being able to put weight down and that's going to be a massive thing so it's like I've come a long way I've come from being so much pain and then really feeling relieved at, after the last surgery being able to move my ankle around and move my toes around without pain and then hopefully the next thing is, is that I'm going to be able to put weight down without pain and it's just going to be fantastic, I can't wait. I'm definitely never ever going to forget the amount of pain it was like to have septic arthritis, but hopefully I will look back on this video in years and years and years time and some memories, don't they? Sometimes you have memories and they start to fade and you forget like the minor details of them. And I don't want to forget it, as horrible as it has been, I really want to be able to remember like all the little details, which is why I wanted to do vlogmas and take videos this month, but also sit down to talk about it. For example, what it was like when I had to sit on the sofa and I couldn't go to bed because it hurt that much. And I remember my birthday, which was, it's June 25th. And that was a day where it hurt so much. And I really struggled to even get down the stairs that morning. And usually we really like to do sort of big things for our birthday. It's like a tradition for me and Ollie to just celebrate and have like a big day out or even like a little holiday for our birthdays. And this year I was really upset that I wouldn't maybe not even be able to get out. We did make it out. We went to the cinema but i'll never forget the day because it was so painful to even come down the stairs and i was maxed out on all painkillers like even really strong opioids and then i was sat on the sofa before we got a taxi to the cinema and i was thinking i was like saying to ollie i don't think i can put my shoes on it hurts so much i don't even know if i can go to the cinema but i didn't just want to stay in for my birthday and we did end up going to the cinema and it was good we saw toy story but it i was in so much pain that day and I was in pain like that for like 24 hours a day for months and months and months. By the time I saw an orthopedic in, um, it was the end of July, beginning of August. By the time I, I saw the orthopedic and I had an x-ray and an MRI, it had already, my the septic arthritis had eaten the bone away and it was down to the cartilage. And I only got the septic arthritis from the group B strep after I had Felix, which was in May. So from May until I had the, actually the x-ray in June. So in literally just such a short time, can you imagine how much pain I must have been in for the infection to have eaten away bone that fast that it was down to the cartilage? Like there was no previous pain or anything like that it was all from the group b strep so it was just after i had felix and 
Now, looking back, I'm so angry because like I went to A&E because I was in so much pain and they said that I pulled a muscle in my leg and you know like misdiagnosis can happen and it does happen and you know things like this are so rare that it really is difficult to diagnose but I was on all the painkillers that I could get from the GP every time I rang up saying like I needed more pain relief because it, I was still in so much pain they were just saying oh well if you've got everything you can possibly have unless you are, are admitted into hospital and the only next thing we can do is refer you to pain clinic and it's like yeah but isn't that a warning sign that I am on all the pain meds and I'm still in agonizing pain 24 7 and I can't walk but nothing seemed to be done about it apart from waiting for an appointment for literally ages so but that's the way it is and you know that's what happened so that's it isn't it and yes it might have been i might have been able to you know i might have been able to this if this was treated sooner rather than later there is a chance that my hip could have been saved because if i'd have been diagnosed with the septic arthritis a lot sooner during the process that it was destroying my hip they could have stopped it with antibiotics but you know, these things happen and is incredibly, incredibly rare. I met with a consultant obstetrician and the labour ward person, a labour ward midwife and the matron midwife at the Hallamshire from Jessup's um, maybe about four weeks ago. And they were just saying like they'd looked in all medical records and they literally could not believe what had happened to me was so rare that they could only find one case of it ever. Like imagine how many people they treat and there's just one case of it and then me like this is so rare that they would even want to talk about it in seminars and write papers about it which doesn't obviously help what's happened to me but it's just crazy isn't it and it could happen to anyone so it sort of is a good thing that they can use this possibly to help people in future. no one will know and no one will ever know why um the infection went to my hip my orthopedic thinks that most definitely there must have been some sort of trauma or something happened to my hip during labour because obviously all through my pregnancy the pregnancy was completely fine I was very lucky to have a very healthy pregnancy you know nothing pointed to any problems with my hips at all I didn't have any hip pain in pregnancy even at the very end nothing at all no one would ever think that there would be anything wrong with my hips ever there was nothing there was no signs at all and i had a v-back and you know i still didn't really have a lot of hip pain in labor really like i had a lot of pain all the contractions but i can't think back to a time where i was thinking oh my hip really hurts nothing but at the very end when i went to theater because he had to be delivered by forceps they did put my legs in stirrups and it really hurt and i remember a time where it felt like they were yanking my legs out and they really had to get them high up in their stirrups and it was quite of it wasn't an emergency situation at that point but it was they did want them to come out as quick as possible so they were rushing and they did want to get my legs up in their stirrups as quick as they could and Ollie, Ollie was there in theatre and he remembers that you know I was saying like my legs can't go any higher and they were trying to get them more up with the stirrups so maybe it was something to do with that and at that time maybe something happened to my hip while they, while they were yanking it about and then the infection sort of spread to that area but we'll never know we don't know what happened that's just that is just a theory of what could have happened and why the infection went there and obviously then when the infection did go there it was so rapid because it destroyed the hip joint in like a few a few a few months less than 12 weeks but we will never know all we know is that what happened happened and hopefully it will never happen again there is nothing i could do to prevent it if i was to have another baby for example in future and i had obviously they would test me for group b strep because of what's happened and maybe they would treat me for it but the thing is it's such a great area group b strep and when i met with the consultant obstetrician and we were talking about group b strep because in some countries they do give uh, pregnant women antibiotics in labor and then afterwards but it is a very gray area and on the nhs as well it's not routinely tested for and it's not routinely treated for either and for group b strep to cause problems for women 
is a lot more rare compared to the issues that it can cause for babies. In this country, it's a lot more popular for group B strep to cause harm and hurt babies after they're, de they're delivered than women. So they don't routinely test for it and they don't routinely treat for it either because even though you may have group B strep, you may carry it, it still doesn't necessarily mean that you might get infected with it. So it's like, why would you treat someone who has group B strep and they might not get ill from it? You just you may never know. Felix is still tired, but I don't know what to do with him. So it is what it is. And I don't know, obviously, I, I don't know if I'll have another baby. And I guess if I did, when I was pregnant, they would test if I had group B strep and maybe they would treat me for it. I don't know. But what happened, happened. And it was because of group B strep. And maybe they should routinely test for it and treat for it. I don't know. What do you think? A lot of people think that... Um, we should be routinely tested for it like we do in other countries. Some people think it's a waste of time. You know, it would be a lot of antibiotics and antibiotics are already not very good for your immune system. So I don't know. Obviously, with what's happened to me, I'm sort of like, yes, we should be routinely tested for it. And maybe we should be given the option to be treated for it. However, if I went back to when I was pregnant with Felix and I was tested for group B strep and then it came back saying, yes, I was carrying group B strep. Would you like to have antibiotics in labor or after? Yes or no. What if I did still decided no anyway and this, this still could have happened to me? It's just we, it's just one of those things where we would never know. And if you are pregnant and you are thinking, gosh, this happened to her from group B strep and I'm scared or you want to get tested for it, then you can get tested for it privately. But I don't believe you can on the NHS unless you have like, unless you maybe have some pointers towards that you might have it. But as far as I know, it's really, really difficult for people to even suspect that you might get in a group b strep infection because it's such a common bacteria that most of us have it anyway so it's just really difficult to even know where to begin with it so many babies are born and they get very very ill from group b strep it can cause septis it, sepsis it can cause meningitis and i'm in some groups on facebook like discussion groups about group b strep but nothing ever really gets posted about mums getting infected from it it's usually commonly it's the babies so felix is very very lucky because it was confirmed that he was born with group b strep covered all over him and they did treat him with a lot of antibiotics for it so he was very lucky that he wasn't very ill they said that when he was in NICU. um and obviously at that point i was like oh group b strep i'd never heard of it you know i had no idea but we didn't know at that point that i was then going to go home and it was going to cause all these troubles with septic arthritis but he's literally like tossing a coin you know someone could have said to me you've got group b strep let's let's toss a coin and heads will be you're going to get an infection and it's going to do this to you and tells is it's not going to do anything to you we would never have known so that's just the way it is and as for other babies i have no idea i would really like another one because i feel like this time like it was taken away from me i was really excited about having another baby thinking it was going to be the last one and like my last pregnancy and it was a v-back and it was you know it's like the last chance for everything but because i feel like for the last seven months everything has been taken away from me and I really do think that I don't know maybe there's some sort of postnatal depression I, I don't really know but I've found it difficult at times to bond with Felix and I feel like I need to get another go and because I've not been able to do like the normal things you do with a newborn like I haven't even been able to go for a walk with him or you know take him out in the pram or go to like baby groups or and I know this might sound really stupid because everyone's different and it doesn't matter what I, I like I've done a lot more than other people do and vice versa but and it's not that I had expectations of what I was going to do either but it's just like I feel like a lot of time has been stolen from me and from being a mum and to think that this time you know was the last time and my last chance of having a baby and a lot of it has been ruined and it's really difficult for me to talk about I feel like I'm gonna cry so I'm gonna change this the chant I'm gonna change I'm gonna change conversation now maybe I'll talk about it another day I'm not sure but that's the topic of 
that's all I'm going to say today about it. It's two days to go, so I'm just very happy for this to be the end of this chapter and starting a new chapter. And I'm sure we'll, you know, in years and years and years to come, I might not even think about it or I might not even remember what it was like, you know, really deep down. And I'm sure we'll have lots of fantastic times that will take all of this away. But then when people do tell me, you know, you won't even remember it and you'll have the rest of your life with Felix. So it doesn't really matter that I've lost all this time. A lot of me thinks like, yes, true. But then a lot of me thinks like, no, that's not true. Because don't you always remember the times with your babies? Like you or I remember, I'm going back to like when I had Eric and Eric was a baby and the first like six months of his life, it just ingrained in me forever. They're like the best memories of me having a baby. And I don't know if it's because he was my first. And that's just what it's like, you know, the first time you have a baby. But, you know, it's a massive, massive thing to even have a baby. So when you do have a baby, you always remember all the little details, you know, all the milestones, you know, it's the best and the most difficult times of your life. And I feel like this time with Felix, I didn't get any of that because it's all been about me and it's all been about this horrible thing that's happened to me. And I've like lost my mobility and my ability to even be a mum. And I know having another baby wouldn't even it wouldn't fix what's happened it wouldn't take it away or you know anything like that but I don't know it just really upsets me to think that that was the last chance I got and that's how it turned out so we'll have to see what happens Ollie really doesn't want another one and I don't even know what it would be like to have another one with a hip replacement I was joking about this in my pre-op because um like the lady was talking about you know usually it's older generation that are having hip replacements and I said yeah but you don't get many 20 year olds having pre-op for hip replacements and then I said can you imagine like if I was to have another baby and I went to the midwife and I was like oh by the way I think you should know I've got a hip replacement and I bet they'd just be like what <laughs> like can you imagine yeah it, I, I don't even know I don't know I guess maybe I don't know